colleagues, and welcome to the Miss Saye Show. Today, another inspiration, Amy Duarte. She's a designer, animator, and illustrator. Welcome to the show, Amy. How are you today? Hi, everybody, and hello, Saye. Thank you for having me today. I am doing fine. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here today. Thank you so much. We're excited to have you. We want to learn about the world of illustration. You know, I have some of your arts, and I cherish them, and I know you have uh, amazing products and I follow you on Instagram and there's, it's so, so inspiring and uplifting to me. So for you, when, where, when and how did you discover your passion to become an illustrator? Well, it was something that I have always known since I was five years old. Um, I was born deaf in a country called Indonesia and in a country like that there's not a lot of um, resources for people with disabilities so when I discovered um, an animated cartoon on TV I just knew this is what I wanted to do and I told my parents this is what I wanted to do so it's from age five up until when I got to college my focus remained steady I never gave up on my dreams I just focused 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 and always found ways to better my skills and you know with determination faith and um have faith in God I made my dreams come true beautiful well I wanted to bring it back you said something very interesting to me because the show is about really personal experiences and thinking like a true global citizen and how we can share our stories so we can elevate the quality of our lives okay. and you mentioned uh, you were born deaf and yes. in the country of indonesia which is a beautiful country and i love that country uh, there wasn't enough resources for someone like you what does that mean and what are the challenges okay. that this will bring Okay, just to show that um, our audience had a point of comparison. In America, when a, a newborn is born in a hospital, they have something called the newborn screening test, where they test everything, including hearing. When I was born, I didn't have any of that. And even when my grandfather found out at around 18 months that I was not responding to sound, my grandfather told my parents, you need to take Amy to the doctor, something's not right. So my parents took to the doctor and this was at 18 months. Even the doctor said, hmm, we don't have the tools or the equipment to do the right test. So why don't you bring her back when she's four years old? and then we'll do some tests. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about a four-year gap. Right. Zero language development for me, and that right. is what I meant by, it is a developing country, and in no way am I trying to put them down. It is just a poor country, and they don't have the resources or the lack of um, training and skills that we have in the United States. So my parents did the best they could, and when they took me back to the doctor at four, they were able to do some rudimentary tests, and they found out, yes, I am deaf. So my parents had to look for a speech therapist because they knew that um, being able to speak will take me further in life. And I want to be very careful how I say this because I'm aware not every deaf person has that ability to speak. So um, again, I want to be very careful how I say it. Sure. The reality mm -hmm. of life is if you learn how to speak, it does open more doors. Of course, yes. And, you know, there's no way to sugarcoat it. So that, that is how it is. I took speech therapy for years and years and years. And... Um, Hopefully, as I'm sitting here speaking with you, it has paid off. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, I, I thank you so much for openly sharing with me. I love having guests like you, that they're so open and comfortable and vulnerable to share their experiences. So that means a lot to me. Um, also, you said something that brings it back to the point that I have been often talking about on the show and on my platforms, the power of our words what yes. we say, the energy of our words, which someone like you who had to go through training and speech therapy to even put more effort to be able yes. to easily, fluently speak. Oh, yes. Someone like me who can easily speak, 
um, yeah. should not take it for granted and should be even more extra careful to use more beautiful, positive, uplifting words that, Thank you know, because you. So we can give good energy to everybody and uplift ourselves and each other with simply the choice of our words. Thank but you. I often talk about it that sometimes we say, I don't like that. Instead of saying, I don't like that, what about we say, I prefer this other yes. thing or I like yes. this other thing, the words that we use. So I want to bring it back to you, but I just want to touch up on that. Yeah. It's a very important thing to me. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's what happened in Indonesia and you knew you wanted to be an illustrator and you had a speech therapist. And what about in school growing up? Was it any uh, difficulties with other kids or they didn't have the resources to teach someone like you? Um, I was, well, first of all, my parents did check out a school for the deaf in Jakarta. That is the capital city of Indonesia. My parents were not impressed with what they saw in the deaf school because from their point of view, it seemed like a very isolated environment. Uh -huh. Deaf children are just with deaf kids. Mm -hmm. And my parents saw in the long run, it would be better if I was put in the hearing world. You know, help me learn from the very beginning how to um, assimilate into the hearing world. Right. So it was the harder path for me. But in the long run, it was so much better because then I learned how to um, communicate with hearing people, how to be in the hearing world. It was not easy. It was a lot of hard work, but I made it work. And for yeah. that, I'm very thankful to my parents for making that decision for me. Incredible. So yes. kind of, I know I'm kind of I'm digressing a little bit, but to go back to your question about the school, my parents enrolled me in a, what we call a mainstream school, the hearing school, and I was the only deaf student. It was a struggle in the beginning because everybody, remember, had that four year ahead, four years um, step ahead than, than I did. So mm -hmm. it was a game of playing catch up. Mm -hmm. My parents would help with my homework. Mm -hmm. And um, when I got to the fourth grade, I was still behind. Mm -hmm. The principal called my parents and said, you know what? We cannot keep her in our school. Mm -hmm. She is so far behind. We cannot um, support a deaf student. Right. From an American point of view, Americans go, oh my gosh, that's discrimination. But if I can share from Indonesia's point of view, it is not discrimination. From their point of view, we, there's, they're thinking we don't have the training or the staff that know right. how to work with a deaf student. So mm -hmm. you cannot kind of force a deaf student on us. So mm -hmm. I can understand both point of view. Interesting. But mm -hmm. so what I did was, okay, how do we make the best of it? So my parents sent me to Canada to live with my mom's sister. How old were you then? Different Montreal. I was 11 years old. 11 years old, okay. I was 11 years old. I was sent to Montreal for two years and I lived with my aunt and it was a new country, a new language and a new school. But um, you know, there's a saying, when life throws you so many curveballs, right. like in baseball, that's when God gave me a baseball bat and said, throwing the hell out of it and I did. <laughs> I, had a, I had a choice choice either I sink or swim and I decided to I'm gonna swim sure. the hell out of it. Sure. So I just grabbed that baseball bat and I swung left and right, up and down, upside yeah. down, trying to hit what I could. Right. And I think it works. Bravo. You just Bravo. don't give up. I mean I'll I'll be honest, there are days when I felt so defeated, but I always have that faith in God. I say, God, if this is your plan, right. I will I will follow it. It's not easy, please. I, I'm not asking God to make my life easy, but give me the strength to go through what your destiny for me is. And sure. Um, sure, I, sure. I'm here, so hopefully I'm a living testimony. That, that is great. You know, yeah, inspiration. Uh, you know, when you have lots of difficulties uh, growing up, it's a blessing. I always see my difficulties growing up as my dear difficulties because they really made me who I am I was like yeah. oh my goodness if I want to go through that right now no thank you but when I went through it as a child and as you said it was just coming at you you just deal with it and you're like Whoa, 
wow, look what I've done. I'm so much more prepared I am. So I understand you and I can relate to you and I tip my hat to you. Bravo to you. Well done. Um, Let's talk about more about your work. I know that you worked in Hollywood. Tell us a little bit of that experience and how was it to, you know, make your dream to that level of accomplishment? Okay. When I went to college, um, remember back in the days before we had emails, we had to write letters (laughs) on a piece of paper. And what I did during the summer times when my friend and I are back in their home, some of them are out of state. Well, I would write letters to them. And the way I write letters, I try to draw pictures. This is what I did today, and I draw it like in a comic comic strip. That's oh, what I did. Awesome. And so one of my friends who received that letter from me left it on her coffee table. And it so happened on that day she had a visitor who was a commercial director. But this guy came and saw my drawing on her coffee table and said, who did this? And so my friend introduced the both of us, and um, the commercial director said, would you like to work on some storyboards for commercials? I said, is the Pope Catholic? Yes. <laughs> yes. So um, I would go to my college classes early in the morning. When I'm done with that, I run to the studio and I would draw my heart out. And I'd be working on commercials for McDonald's, Snapple, Hanes. And I was only 19 years old. So Incredible. it was a huge break for me. And one they, they know the way I work. I get called back a lot for other jobs. Incredible. Yes. And when I got to my junior year of college, I applied for an internship at Walt Disney Fisher Animation. That, that was like my holy grail. It was the dream that I've had. That's Walt outside. Disney, right. <laughs> so I applied. And mm. what I didn't know was the amount of competition, the amount of people that applied for a very tiny number of positions. I got called in for an interview and they told me, we have only 15 positions, one by 15. And we have 1,500 of you competing for this position. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my gosh, but I did my best. You know, I showed them this is what what I can bring to the table. This is my work. And I I left the rest up to God. I, I said, I did what I could. And within a couple of days, I did not hear a call back and I was getting a little disappointed. But then I got that call. Woo! It said, Amy, you got the job. So that was so my big, my big uh, stepping stone. It was my internship at Disney. And then when I graduated in my, after my senior year of college, I offered a full-time position. And from right there, I would just work from one movie to another. Incredible. Incredible. So, and... I think the key is to be very professional mm-hmm. at your work. Mm-hmm. And it's so important to keep promises, mm-hmm. even if the promise is not really work related, but it right. builds your character. Yes. And yes, a yes. perfect example is if somebody at my, my work said, Oh, Amy, I love that um, muffins that you made the other day. Can I have your recipe? Can I have the recipe? And I said, Sure, I'll bring it tomorrow. And follow up with so it. So even though it's about muffin and nothing related to it. Sure. But I will follow follow the Bravo. Bravo. 100%. 100% Amy. I so understand you. And, uh, you know, I know you personally as well. I so agree with you. It's your character. It shows your reliability. It yes. shows that you come through. And exactly. one more thing about you that I personally know that I think actually it's not lucky. You didn't get lucky. Uh, beside that you're excellent illustrator, you go the extra miles. Yes. So you don't, you have to. and that's something that, you know, I very much believe in and I like to implement. You don't just pass the finish line. You no. pass the finish line and you go a mile to make sure. Correct. That's, that's how I think. Correct. And I think that's, that's what you do. And that shines in your work. It's like this girl is not coming to just get the job done. I say, okay, five o'clock, I'm leaving. No, she's going to uh, make sure she's performing like top level. Yes. And it's important to make the clients feel that you hurt them. 
Yes. So that's so important, and that's the magic of making clients call you back again and again. So right. really, there is no secret. It's not like, ooh, a magic formula. It is so simple. Yes. Be reliable, always follow through, and like you said, go the extra mile. And yes. you, you, you're pretty much set in stone for your career. Well, thank you so much for sharing these personal points with us and uh, the, the key to your success. Um, tell us one of your most favorite work that you have done and why. Okay. Um, my favorite experience in my whole visual effect career was working on Fantastic Four. Mm. We were working on the special effect for Jessica Alba's character. She was the invisible woman. Whenever she became emotional, she became invisible, but her clothes stay on. So you have to kind of track in the back of her clothes. Or if she's wearing a watch, you see the watch floating because her arms become invisible. And you keep the little highlight of her face so she's not completely invisible. You see a little bit of her eyelashes or her nose. And whatever you see behind her is refracted like you're looking through a glass. I love that experience because it was the first time where I got promoted to become um, a team lead. And for me, it was a big deal. Bravo. A deaf girl from Indonesia where the expectation of people of me was pretty low. And people, by the way, people expected back then that I would only amount to learning how to sweep the floor or cook. That was the expectation of me. So for I me to you. be able to achieve a lead position and lead wow. a team of artists to do the special effect for um, the Invisible Woman, Bravo. What a milestone for me emotionally and spiritually. How wonderful. Congratulations and thank you for sharing that. That's another thing. Sometimes like to our young audience, our young followers, if you dream of something, mm -hmm. it's enough if you dream it. You don't yeah. need to convince everybody else that this is your dream and you're gonna you don't need to convince everybody. As long as you are convinced, keep going. Because yes. many people may have their own version of what they want for you or how they see you or what's enough for you. But right. you, if you know, you know. So don't worry yeah. about convincing others about your dream. If they don't get it, don't even share it. Just keep right. going. <laughs> so right. I hear you. Uh, that's fantastic for the Fantastic Four film. Yes. Um, congratulations on that. You seem like yeah. you have lots of great work under your belt. I also know you're putting some calendar products out. I own one of your calendars. And I see you do lots of royal family uh, editions, uh, which is very cute. What inspired you to do that? Um, I'm sorry, can we repeat that last question sure. I missed you? You do lots of royal family, like royal family. Oh, the royal family, the royal yes. family, yes. Um, it started as a hobby. Uh -huh. I, I am, I'll admit here, I am a big fan girl of Kate Middleton, the Duchess of Cambridge, for years and years, because mm -hmm. to me, she's the epitome of grace and being polished and being on a world stage. but always but still very relatable and I love her fashion so it started where I would draw the beautiful dresses that she would wear and I trust me it started as a hobby I would have a little sketchbook but then when I started sharing it with a couple people and then people said oh my gosh I'd like to buy a print of that so, and then kind of grew, and over the years, my followers have just kind of grew. I mean, I, I want to be humble about it. I still have ways to go, but people have kind of discovered me, and people now I'm selling um, the royal art fashion print. So it started as a hobby. And also, Very good. Um, I have authors who are writers of romance novels that are about the royal family they contact me to illustrate the book covers they are beautiful i it definitely caught my attention and you know i that's why i, I wanted to everybody else to know as well before we wrap up the show there are people who are maybe inspired to become mm -hmm. illustrator yeah and um do you have a couple of resources that you could share with us i know we talked about the ethics of it and the personality yeah. traits that we need and uh, or habits that we need to uh, okay. implement. But sure. what uh, resources could you offer to someone who's a young, young, you know, young woman or young man, and they want to become an illustrator? Okay, 
Um, one piece of advice I say, if, if somebody wants to get into the animation field, mm -hmm. you have to be 100% committed to it. If, if people come up to me and say, oh, you know, I'm going to major in economics, but I want to do this on this side, it's a much right. harder hill to overcome. Right. right. Because if you're doing 50% here and 50% sure. here, you are competing with people who are doing it 100% Sure, time. sure, yes. So you always have to live it. Read it, breathe it, eat it, live it. So that is my best advice. Don't get so scatterbrained and trying to do 20% here, 20% there. Right. Then no, 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 all, all energy. Another thing that I'm saying, Grand Canyon is Grand Canyon is because all the water went yeah. over there and became Grand Canyon. If it was lost, right. it was a little, with bunch of little streams. So if you want right. something, if you want something, 100% here, there yeah. is no plan. That's B. it. <laughs> That's the key. It's what about the resource? Are there any resources? Are there any apps or website that people can start uh, developing their skills? There are a lot of, um, especially right now with the pandemic, there's a lot of online courses for um, those who want to learn animation. There is a guy that I like to follow. His name is Aaron Blaze. He has some really good um, instructional animation workshop and i will spell the name n a a r o n b l a i s e he has some really great um so it's workshop. online workshop so, perfect it's perfect for yeah, the, the one time when we are doing a lot of things from home i take a lot of workshops i'm, I'm constantly taking master class and this and that and my fiance come home he's like what are you doing i'm like i'm having this course with united nation right now he's like what, what are you doing i was like i have all this time in my hand so that's great. Maybe I get inspired to take a course so I can get a little window of, uh, from you awesome. in life. And thank awesome. you so much, Amy, for giving us your time. Thank you for your inspirational story. Uh, sending you lots of love. Mwah. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Hey, guys. Miss Saye here. And if you are enjoying our content on the Miss Saye Show, please be sure to follow, share, and subscribe. See you every Saturday on The Messiah Show.